Man first landed on the moon in 1969, and it's recorded as a new phase in humans' technological advancement. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration has been responsible for numerous incredible achievements, and has made countless discoveries. It's one of the most prestigious research agencies in the world, and one of the first to conduct space explorations. Since the first launch of a ship in space, there have been many technological advances and discoveries, whose protagonists have been the agency's researchers. The Apollo missions will go down in history as being one of humans' most impressive feats. As stated on NASA's website, Apollo 17 was the last lunar landing mission. Three EVA activities lasted a total of 22 hours and 4 minutes on the lunar surface. End quote. Some of these photographs, though, allegedly show more than what they intended. Amateur researchers who were looking through old Apollo 17 images decided to zoom in and view the background. Once they did this, though, they quickly noticed that something strange could be seen hovering in the background. Theorists stated that the craft is triangular in shape and matches those that are commonly seen on Earth. These triangular UFOs have been seen on our planet for years now, with pilots coming forward in detailing similar looking crafts. After being shared on an online UFO group, one of the members said the following, It's tedious work, but if you have the time, many of these objects can be found in old Apollo images. They match the triangle UFO that so many have seen, displaying the three lights that the craft often gives off. End quote. Another person said the following, I don't get how people can deny that these crafts have been seen. It's amazing to think that they have the ability to hover above our moon. People have been seeing the exact same crafts on our planet for years. It's not like we've never seen anything like this before. A simple Google search will show you all of the triangle crafts that are photographed every year. The next question that needs to be put forward is what are these things? And who owns them? If they are ours, then we're basically admitting that we have tech that's able to take us into space. And this was during the 70s. End quote. Other amateur researchers have said that similar looking triangular crafts can also be seen in earlier Apollo missions, including Apollo 11. One skeptic, however, spoke out about this alleged UFO and said the following. What I find interesting about this photograph is that these are the same people who claim we never went to the moon, and yet here we have a photograph of an alleged UFO. It seems that these types of people can't make up their mind on whether we actually went or not. From looking at the photograph to me it just looks like a camera anomaly, or possibly a small piece of space debris. The only thing we have to go by is a tiny object in the corner of an image, and I'm sure if we zoomed in on many of the Apollo images, we'd find something similar. For me, this is completely natural. End quote. NASA also gets a lot of questions in regards to UFOs, and one of these came from a user on Twitter. They asked the following. I know that it's true Apollo 11 did spot a UFO. If so, is it true that these radios could pick up Apollo 11 saying that the other spacecraft were spotted on the crater on the edge of the moon, and were much more advanced than the Apollo 11 technology? Dr. David Morrison, who served as an institute director at NASA, said the following to the question, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you are repeating stories that are known to be false. No astronauts saw UFOs. There are no secret Apollo transmissions, radio or television picked up by hams. There was no case of Apollo astronaut spotting other spacecraft on crater rooms or anywhere else. End quote. Other skeptics point out, however, that these small dots can't be taken seriously, and that what we're most likely seeing is just some type of photographic anomaly. NASA has backed this up and said that the majority of these can be explained either as dust particles on the lens, or other space anomalies that happen to get picked up. Others, however, disagree with this idea, and have said this isn't the first time that a strange-looking object has been photographed in space. 
going on to say that it's not like NASA and other space agencies are going to admit that they know about UFOs. With one believer saying that the day they admit they're real, is the day that they're essentially admitting that they've lied to the general public for decades. As UFO researchers point out, the moon is actually one place where many alleged UFOs have been captured, with researchers saying there's more going on around our moon than what we're being told. Another place where these mysterious crafts have been seen is that of the International Space Station. Astronomers have said these objects can be explained using everyday things, but people have struggled to explain some of the objects that have been seen close to the International Space Station, with amateur researchers saying that some of these are definitely not space debris, with one UFO researcher saying the following, I understand that some of these objects can be explained as space debris, and that makes sense, but it's obvious that some of these are not space debris. Also, if this was the case, why does the space station camera shut off when they come into view? If they were just space debris, why shut down the live feed? It's this kind of behaviour that makes people question these objects. End quote. It seems that the topic of UFOs and interest around it is at an all-time high, with some even believing that the government will be coming forward with some credible evidence in regard to the topic. Time will tell whether the government knows more than what they're letting on. One of the most long-standing legends in all of recorded history, and arguably the most popular tale of advanced ancient civilizations in modern-day culture, is that of the lost city of Atlantis. This mystery has stood the test of time. Atlantis's popularity is not limited to its philosophical roots, at least in relation to its not so recent adaption as the home of the famous comic book hero Aquaman. It's so popular in fact that it even has its own dedicated field of study within the realm of pseudo-history, a lantology accompanied by a research database known as Lantopedia. Recorded history presents us with this story in the time of the ancient Greeks, via one of the most prolific philosophic writers, Plato. Atlantis was founded by Poseidon, who fell in love with a human known as Cleito. Together they had five sets of twins, whom of which eventually came to develop and rule over the ten different provinces of Atlantis. It's believed that as time passed, these rulers slowly divided up portions of this fable land, in order to create a legacy between each family. The Atlanteans grew to be an advanced civilization for its time, far ahead of all other civilizations surrounding it. They were known to be much more developed in maritime navigation, city infrastructure, military pursuits and even agriculture. The actual city of Atlantis is known to have been a main citadel in the center, surrounded by six concentric rings, three of water and three of land. In the dialogue, Plato described the city of Atlantis being 50 states from the sea, which translates to just under six miles. Atlantis was connected to the sea via a canal, which was 300 feet wide and 100 feet deep, and ended at a harbour near the settlement. The actual continent of Atlantis was explained by Plato as being larger than Asia and Libya combined, with the plains surrounding the city being approximately 230 miles wide and 345 miles long, and with a large range of mountains at the northern end of the continent, and smaller mountains surrounding the rest of the center plains. The entire continent was described as being rich in soil, plant and animal life, elephants included, and having reasonable temperatures for sustaining these life forms. Throughout the dialogue, Plato does not cease to chronicle aspects of Atlantis down to the finest details. He speaks of the main palace in the centre of the city, elegant bathhouses, temples, statues of gold and silver, gardens housing for both people and animals, guard houses and even racetracks. Bulls were worshipped and viewed as divine in the city of Atlantis, and roamed the streets freely. Plato then goes on to describe other settlements of people in the surrounding areas of the continent, but simply labels them as wealthy farmers and country folk. 
Plato explains the military set up by the city of Atlantis. He goes into great detail about the various roles filled by members of the ancient city in its hierarchy, all the way from king down to citizen. Although the details of Atlantis have been passed down, one question remains. Where is it? Various theories have been put forward to suggest why Atlantis suddenly vanished. Those who believe in the ancient city have said it reached its peak around 900,000 years ago, but internal battles caused the city to be lost at sea. In recent years, many have come forward and said they think they've found the mythical city, and one of the ways they've done this is by using things like Google Earth. The most recent one was found by a man who said he was searching Google Earth. He said that he is certain that these underwater structures are proof that the lost city once existed. This discovery was made 1,245 kilometers or 773 miles from Virginia Beach in the United States. However, other researchers have said this isn't where Atlantis would have been, noting that it would have been a lot more north. Regardless, others have bought into the idea that Atlantis could have somehow moved along the sea floor. Another idea is that a giant flood could have taken out the advanced city, and even moved it to a different location. This does raise an interesting question. Why do so many cultures have similar stories about floods? One theory is that these floods actually took place sometime around the end of the last ice age. This correlates with Plato's description of the destruction of Atlantis. As told by the Egyptian elders 9,000 years before Solon went to Egypt in 600 BC. This is where scientifically proven geological findings come into play. It has been proven that approximately 11,600 years ago, the Earth did undergo massive rises in sea level. For this theory to make sense, Atlantis would have had to have existed during the last ice age, and at the end of this era there may have been pole shifts which led to multiple natural disasters. Some researchers have speculated that some survivors of this ancient maritime civilization may have reached out to surrounding civilizations, like Egypt and Africa, and the Incan and Aztec empires in South and Central America, and even as far as Babylonia and Summer and even India. All these cultures have stories of men appearing after a cataclysmic flood. Thoth and Osiris in Egypt, Viracocha in Inca, Quetzalcoatl in the Aztec Empire, Vishnu in India and Enki in Summer. Perhaps these Atlantean survivors travelled to these places, and being so advanced they were accepted as gods, and influenced each culture's history as such. One idea that supports this theory is the discovery of pyramids, and pyramid-like structures in each of these areas. Perhaps the survivors spread their knowledge of pyramids and their alignment with the stars, in the hopes that future civilizations would gather the clues and solve this mystery. Another theory is that Atlantis was actually destroyed at the end of the Bronze Age. The explanation for this mix-up in historic timelines can be found in ancient Egyptian timekeeping. The Egyptians used both solar years as well as lunar years for keeping time while solar years lined up with 365 days a year, lunar years are measured in months. If the Egyptian elder who told Solon the story of Atlantis was speaking in terms of lunar years, meaning 9,000 months instead of years, this could have lined up with the end of the Bronze Age. So what do you make of these recent underwater discoveries? Could it be possible that these structures are ruins of ancient Atlantean empires? Until we learn more, Atlantis will remain a mystery of the world. Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.